In this lesson we're going to look at dimension styles. In the previous lesson we looked at textiles. It's very similar, uh, except that there's a few more properties uh, involved in uh, doing uh, dimension styles. Uh, as you can see here I have two dimension styles. Uh, we have this line here, the horizontal line, at the, which we'll call a, a dimension line. And these extension lines and these little crosses here, uh, they're called ticks, architectural ticks. And then we have our dimension. Similar here, again this line here, vertical this time, but that's our dimension line. Extension lines and our ticks. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we create one of these, or at least we're going to modify one that's existing. Uh, we're going to leave this one the way it is, and we're going to learn about it, uh, about the way we go about doing that. So to open that uh, window to edit our dimension styles, we can type dim style and press enter key or spacebar. And what you'll see is you'll have three different styles um, here that's the default. We have annotative, similar to the text, and standard, similar again to text, and this other one, ISO 25. The ISO 25 is the one I've currently used with the dimensions I showed just previously. What we're going to do now though is we're going to edit the standard one. So we'll select, left click on standard, and then we'll left click on set current. So it's now our current style. And what we're going to do is we're going to close this window and we're going to create two more dimension styles. Now to create a dimension, uh, we can go up to dimension and go to linear. And all that we could just type and see the command prompt here, dim linear. Now it's going to ask me for um, the first origin point. So I've got my snaps turned on. So if you haven't got your snaps turned on, press the F3 key. So I'm going to click here and here and I'm going to come down and I'm going to click start the command again and then click here and here and as you can see these dimension styles look different uh, so the one that I've currently uh, the ones I did previously and these current ones don't have any ticks at all uh, they don't have any gap between where I began the dimension and uh, the actual dimension line itself um, they have a decimal place which we uh, it's not really what we want for what we're doing um, you could always leave that. I mean, for certain industries, a, dimens a decimal point is probably going to be relevant. But uh, for architectural, I find that decimal places are really uh, not necessary. So anyway, we'll go back to our uh, Dimension Style Manager window. So we'll type dim style space enter. And now, as we've got standard uh, uh, set as current, uh, we're going to modify it. So we'll click on the Modify button. And the very first tab, as you can see all these tabs at the top here, the very first tab is lines. So let's look at those. Um, before we do, I'll just let you know there's a little preview window here, this black window, which is gives you an idea about what you're editing and what it's going to look like. So for instance, this very first one we he have here, dimension lines, with the color, if we select on that and change it to red, you can see now it's what it's referencing. It's referencing that particular dimension line, um, which is that red one and the other things you can do here you can also change that line type if you wanted to um, to another line type we've only got uh, continuous loaded in at the moment but if we had dashed we could click on dashed and that would change uh, that to a dashed line again same with the line weight we'll get into the line weights later on in our um, course uh, so don't worry about that right now and we've got suppress here um, if you, if you see if I click the first suppress dimension line you can see it's hidden that uh, line and if I click the other one it's hidden it completely um, I generally find that I always have those things unticked because uh, I always want to show my line now the extension lines if we change that perhaps to a green color as you can see these are the extension lines um, again you can change the, um, the line type and the line weight of those things and now something I want to look at is if you remember previously I just mentioned how there's no gap between the dimension line and our object um, that's controlled by two two things um, there's two different ways you can go about doing that uh, one is offset from the origin point what that means is when we clicked the bottom of the rectangle and moved the dimension out from those first two click points it can create a gap of whatever we specify so if we put 50 mil in here, as you can see in the, in the preview window, there's a narrow gap. 
and if I click OK and close, we now have a gap and approximately uh, that should be yeah, exactly the 50 mil. There we go. We just measured that 50 millimeters. So we'll go back to our dimension style. Click on modify. Okay, so that's one way we can do it. So we put back back to zero. We can also change the uh, by fixed length. What that means is the extension line, that green line that we were showing, we currently can't see, um, is fixed at a particular length. I've got mine set here at 750 mil. Let's perhaps we'll change it to 500. Click OK. And as you can see, the dimension line, if I measure that, is exactly 500 mil. And that doesn't, that's regardless of where I move this grip. You can see that's currently, it's always going to be 500. It will shrink if I move it beyond the 500 mil, as you can see. But as long as I uh, keep that beyond the 500 mil, and it doesn't matter where I move this, you can see it's still staying at 500 mil. So that's another option or another way you can go about doing that. So I'm going to go back to our dimension style, modify. The other thing we have here is extend beyond dimension lines. I was going to untick this fixed length for a moment and I'm going to put this back to 50 mil gap. Uh, this is, well, I'll type it in, we'll type in 50 mil. As you can see, there's a little green um, uh, piece of the extension line that's sort of gone beyond. Um, that's, uh, that's the extension uh, beyond the uh, dimension line. So we click OK. As you can see, there it is. So we'll go back to our dimension style window. And you can also suppress the extension lines, such as that. Uh, generally don't find I need to do that. So we're moving along. We'll go to our next tab, Symbols and Arrows. And here we can select the type of arrowhead or architectural tick that we want to use. Um, I generally use either architectural tick or an oblique. So we'll, we'll select oblique. And we can't see it right now because our arrow size is uh, too small. So we perhaps change that to 50 mil. And it's a bit harder to see. Maybe we'll make that a little larger, 100 perhaps. You can see the um, the little arrowhead tick there now. That's a bit easier to see. So we'll go to. We've also got our leader. Uh, we'll talk about leaders uh, later on. Um, so that's been selected. There are other things you could use. Generally, I find I use a, an arrowhead, or perhaps even a right angle, or a, as, a, as, a, as that. Um, we won't worry about these other things here right now. We'll just leave them uh, as the time being. And we'll go to our next tab, text. And here we can select the text style that we've created. Uh, currently, it's set to standard. We can also change the text color. So if I change it to yellow. And fill color, if I select magenta, as you can see, it's now put a magenta color at the back of the, uh, the text. We'll click OK and click Close, and you can see how that works. You can also see our architectural ticks. So we'll go back to our uh, dimension style. OK, uh, I generally don't use the fill color, so I can just I'll leave that as none. And I might just change the text color to cyan. Um, these ones here, um, down the bottom here. Oh, well, we'll look at this too. Draw a frame around the text is also another thing you can do. Um, I generally don't use it either. Now, looking at text placement, this means it's um, currently centered on the dimension line. And as you can see, if I move that around, if it's horizontal, see it's at extension line one, it's moved it to extension line one or vice versa, let's move to the other extension line. Um, I generally leave these as centered. Um, and on horizontal, I'll leave it as centered. And often I leave the vertical as above. Um, you can play around with these to see what you what you prefer. Um, so that's that. Um, this is the other thing here I normally select too, is align with dimension line. As you can see now, I've changed that um, actually, I might change this to centered as well. Um, actually, now we'll put it back to above. So it's just above the dimension line. Um, align with dimension line 
actually as you can see with this vertical line here it now the text is now fully aligned with it and that will be the same with whatever angle that we draw the dimension line at we'll click OK and close we can go up and now we can see that this dimension line if you remember it was before it was horizontal it's now vertical so I'm going to open up my dimension style manager again go to modify and we can look at um, we'll look at primary units this is where the dimension um, uh, the decimal point is in place. As you can see, we have four decimal places. We can change that to zero, so it's just no decimal places at all. We can also change our um, unit format. I usually use decimal. And we have rounding off as well, if you want to round off. So for instance, if you had uh, 96 millimeters, you could round it off to either 95 or 100, depending on what you wanted to do. A prefix and a suffix means you could put uh, a letter or text or or a number in front of the um, text if you wanted to. Um, I generally don't see, as you can see, I'll put 12 there and it's got 12 in front of all those numbers, or I'll put A and I'll put A at the end. But uh, I, I don't tend to use that, but it's good to know about. The measurement scale, I generally leave this as set to 1. This can get quite complicated with scales and so forth with AutoCAD. We will get into that more, um, but I would leave that at 1 for now. Um, Again, angular dimensions, um, I use decimal degrees, you may use degrees, minutes, seconds. Uh, as you can see here, we've got 60 degrees. And it's not changing there uh, when I change it, but uh, that, that can be changed to degrees, minutes, and seconds. And it also, we've got the precision. So it's probably not going to make a difference in the preview. Oh, no, it does. There you go. It's got a decimal place. So that could be, for instance, 60.5 degrees. Um, if you want it to be, but I just generally leave that again at uh, rounded off. Alternative units, if I click on and if I select this um, checkbox, allows me to put a different unit format. So I could put architectural and click, if I click OK and close, as you can see, it's put a type of architectural um, dimension style in there. So I generally, again, I don't generally use that. It's just too too messy and too fussy. Um, you could use all sorts of different, um, uh, well, different unit formats that you like. Um, as I said, I don't generally use that. And we're not going to worry about tolerances. And what we will do, we'll go back to our Fit tab. And this might not come up so much in the preview, but um, when you place a dimension in AutoCAD, sometimes you might have a very squashed dimension, a very small one, and AutoCAD wants to know how it's going to treat the text in the dimension um, when it does that. So I'll, we'll do that. I'll just close this for a moment, and we'll drag this along. And as you can see, it's pushed the, the 74 out here with a little line. And we go back to our Dimension Style Manager make it fit. So it's the first option is generally either text or arrows, the best fit. Um, what you can also, well I'll generally leave it that there is the, the main option, but with text placement, which is what we were looking at just a moment ago, um, you can have this over dimension line for the leader. As you can see there's a little leader that's come out there, or you can have it over dimension line without a leader. As you can see it's uh, got the uh, the dimension there, and let's put it right in the middle of the dimension um, with no leader, so it's just sort of squashed it in there. So you can also use these other tabs here, oh, um, for manually putting the text after you've placed the dimension line. Um, we'll also, as you can see, if I tick this box, you can see in the preview, little line popping in and out. Uh, it's quite useful for radiuses, um, where it extends a line to the center point. Um, I generally leave this one unticked too, or oh, both of these unticked actually, uh, because I prefer AutoCAD just to manually, um, or automatically should I say, um, place the text for me. Um, here's the option here to, to for annotative 
uh, text. I generally don't use annotative um, really much at all for either text or dimension styles. Um, but as you remember from the previous lesson, um, that's where you would turn this on. And also, this is using a universal or overall scale. I generally leave this set to one. Okay, so this is the sort of basics of um, AutoCAD. Um, as you can see also here, one thing we didn't look at was these dimension lines don't quite look right, is extend beyond ticks. So we've got that set to zero. We'll change it to 50. And as you can see, we've got a little bit that's popped out there. Okay.